I'll show you the rest later. I'll show you the rest later. What is up, YouTubers? Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Now, my three favorite grooves. I think a more appropriate title might be my three favorite groove environments. So when I think of grooves, I'm definitely not thinking about a very specific groove from a specific drummer. I'm thinking about what made that thing possible. So let me explain that a little bit. Let's take uh, Rosanna by Toto. So very famous halftime shuffle. The first time I heard that, I didn't run to my teacher and say, can you teach me this song and this beat by this drummer? I ran to my teacher and said, what is this beat? What makes it possible? Because that's what I want to know. I want to make my own version of this stuff. And I want you guys and you gals to make your own versions of this as well. So I'm going to walk you through my favorite groove environments and I'll show you how I've kind of morphed them into something that I'm proud of, and then I want you to do the same thing. So our first groove environment is going to be the Gadsden groove. All right, now if you don't know what a Gadsden groove is, you can think of it as a single-handed version of our basic two-handed 16th note groove was made popular by James Gadsden. So I prefer to play the single hand version or the Gadsden groove unless I physically just can't do it because of speed. So the reason why is because then I get a hi-hat on two and four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now what happens if I go to this jobby? One E and a, what the hell? No hi-hat. So that's fine if I'm motabulating. But if I'm slow, I want to get that hi-hat in there. One, two, three, four. One, chick, doom, chick. So when it comes to the Gadsden groove, I treat it as an environment, something I can explore. So I start off here. And then I think about like, uh, I start singing. Oh, okay, I like that. That's what I want you to do with these environments, and here is my favorite variation of the Gadsden Groove. Now before you start typing like, can we get the PDF to that? The PDF is in every one of these lessons on YouTube. It's in the description. I always put it there for you. And it's not just a PDF, it's the Groove Scribe. So you can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can swing it, you can add notes, you can subtract notes. So yes, the PDF is there for all of these grooves. Moving on to groove number two. Actually, no, let's not move on to groove number two. The link to my metronome is in the description as well. Now moving on to groove number two, the Songo. All right, so that's the PDF version of the 2-3 Songo, and it's basically the exact same version of the Songo that I taught here on YouTube about 13 years ago on Gospel Chops' channel. And so, um, uh, it just sounds like this. So that, that pattern. <laughs> that was a long time ago. All right, so if that's the PDF version, if that's the version that's just given to us, well, what are you gonna do with it? So I wanna show you what I've done with it. I've taken it from this, brought in kind of like a shakery pattern on the left foot. So I'm going splash, close, close against the tumbao. So. And then I've changed the right hand from this. I don't know if I can do this and talk to you at the same time to this. And then I've changed up the left hand accents quite a bit. And that became my version of this, something that I can be proud of where, of course, I didn't invent it from scratch. It came from somewhere. It came from something. And then I kept playing it and kept playing it until I thought, okay, well, let's be honest. I'm an American drummer playing in California in a room all by myself. I can have a little leeway with this. I can keep messing with it and tweaking it until it becomes something unique to me and something that I'm proud of. And this is my version of the song.
third and final groove environment that I like to really mess around with would be 6-8 Afro-Cuban. So taking this thing right here. So taking that basic 6-8 Afro-Cuban groove and trying to make it as musical and melodic as possible. I've got a four-piece kit. This, let's, this is just a table for my tea. So I've got a four-piece kit and I want to make this thing sing and this groove is perfect for that because I don't have to change anything. I turn my snares off, I switch the foot from this or the foot pattern instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead of that, I'm going splash, close, splash, close, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I still have that dang, 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 left hand. But by just moving the orchestration, not adding any notes, not changing the rhythms in any way, but just moving my hands around the kit, it becomes super musical. YouTubers, so those are my three favorite groove environments, and I hope you learned something through this, and not just these grooves. I hope you learned to see things slightly different, and the next time you hear a groove, whether it be on a song, or just watching a drummer on Instagram or YouTube, don't just immediately go, oh, let me steal that note for note. Ask yourself, what made that groove possible? What is the basis for that groove? What's the environment that that drummer is improvising inside of? Because when you start doing that, you start to come up with your own things. And that's when you want to press record. You want to upload to Instagram because you're like, uh, I didn't take this from anybody. I made this and I'm really excited about that and I want that for you. So if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor, press the like button, I would really appreciate that. If you want more of this stuff, check out mikeslessons.com. And until next time, bye everybody.